So everybody, Notch's story. Now this could take a while, so it could be part one of who knows how many episodes because he lived, arrived in the marsh. Well, first of all, who are we talking about? Notch. This amazing, beautiful, big black mane lion. And he had an incredible mane even when he was a youngster. Um, mane coloured varies according to the area. Sometimes according, you can in the Mara have blonde mane lions, ginger mane lions, black mane lions. Anyway, his chest mane was incredible. And if you look in this picture, this was probably about 2007, you can see his teeth are still in very good nick. So all of the lower canines, or rather all of the lower incisors are still there. And they eventually, they, they lose those over time. And the canines get worn down to stumps as well. So in my Big Cat Diary records, here we go. Um, and, you know, I'm a, I'm a great diarist. I love scribbling and making notes. I think that background in zoology really helped me there. So I've always, when I first came to the Mara in 1977, I'd be out there with my notebooks recording details um, of what the animals were doing and identifying them as, as, as individuals. And that's what makes it really interesting, getting to know the individual. And every line is very different. And uh, so what have I written? So Notch and his companions, so Notch and another male, don't know if they were brothers, relatives, in 50% of cases in the Mara, in the old days certainly, the average number of males with a pride was two. And of those two males, of that average number, 45% of those twosomes were not related. Now you wouldn't have known it because when two nomads get together, they can't generally hold a territory on their own or take over a territory on their own. So powers in numbers. So a couple of young male lions, you know, no longer being pushed out of their pride at sort of one and a half, two, two and a half years of age, meet up contesting for food with hyenas and decide, you know what, the two of us together, even if we're a bit sort of iffy about each other, stick together, we can chase the hyenas, move around. And so they do that during their nomadic phase. And we reckon when Notch arrived in the Marsh Pride 2004 at about four years of age with his companion, it was probably his first time as a Pride male. So cubs born 2005, new generation of cubs uh, when they came in. And then mid 2005, Notch's companion was killed by three large male lions from Paradise Plains. They'd become across Rhino Ridge, moved to the north, and they found, you know, three against two, and they killed the companion. But a very interesting little addition to this story. Because when lion researchers actually are trying to, you know, find out how many lions there are in an area, certainly in the old days, one of the techniques was to use call-ins. So you'd drive around with a uh, big loudspeaker and you'd play the sound of hyenas at a kill or lions roaring to get the lions in the area you're trying to count to get them to come out of the woodworks because they're probably lying down maybe all of them in one little place and unfortunately and that's why they don't use this technique very much anymore is that when they played the sounds of roaring lions three males from paradise came over the rise and attacked Notch and his companion and they killed his companion. Now somehow, and I write about this here in an updated version of the Marsh Lions paperback by Brat, and I write here, in 2005 one of the two, one of the two new resident males was cornered and killed by three of the Paradise Pride Lions, but Notch, the surviving male, and Notch he had a split in his nose. It wasn't too big or prominent to begin with, but eventually it got much more so. Anyway, so what I said, Notch, the surviving male, not only had eight cubs to defend, he was also support supported by some very capable adult lionesses. Just reading the names, all comes back to me. White Eye, Red, she used to be called Mama Lugger, Bibi, lived to 17 and then sadly died because of poisoning December 2015. Another story to tell you about with a conservation element and Lispy. One white eye, red, BB Lispy and would not give up his territory without a fight. So he stuck very close. He was smart. Keep with the females. I've no longer got a male companion and move around where they move and maybe keep your head down a bit because obviously if you're doing a lot of roaring and you're a 
Lions can count. Roaring's their way of communicating, telling other lions, friends and foes, how many of you and where are we? Helps to space them. But believe me, lions, those paradise males, would know there's two males down there and we can go and get into a rumble. There's three of us. So he probably didn't roar so much, or except when he's in the core of his territory, the heart which you retreat to and defend most closely. So while we had never heard of a male lion in the Mara managing to claim a territory on his own, now this is different. On your own, you can't go and take on more numerous coalitions to try and gain a pride. But if you're left on your own, you've got that group of females who you're bonded with, who you might and the lights went out, you know what, we're going to break there, but I'll be back. Hi everybody, so we know what we're talking about today, don't we? It's that big boy notch. So, just to remind you who I'm talking about, look at that male, I mean seriously, I would love to have hair like that. So, notch, why did we call him notch? He had a split in his nose and in fact it healed up after a certain point and by the time that picture was taken from this book done by chums of mine and it's from the film african cats so disney filmed carly they called notch because the split had healed in case you're getting confused and you've seen african cats and um, they filmed that between 2008 2010 by which time notch and his boys had moved away from the marsh pride and they'd headed down to paradise and they were causing chaos down there it was sort of you know 2008 was the beginning of their real move as a big group but uh, let's just go back a little bit so back to the big cat diary notebooks which are there and let me just read a little bit here from my notes as to what was going on. So we decided, we knew that Notch and Companion took over the Marsh Pride towards the end of 2004. And we estimate that Notch was probably born around the year 2000. So by the time he was in the Pride, by the time he'd moved into the, uh, the Marsh Pride with his companion, he was about four years old. So that was 2005. So Cubs born 2005, when he moved in towards the Pride 2004, Cubs sired by him and his companion um, in the middle of 2005. And as I mentioned yesterday or the day before, his companion were killed by three males who were nomadic at that time. They came from paradise. We think that probably they'd been drawn into the area by those uh, calls actually amplified by researchers who were trying to, um, you know, unwittingly were trying to count the number of lions and those three males came over looking for trouble, heard roars and they killed Notch's companion. Now, a very important thing to think about right here because we talked then about Notch and his boys, so young sub-adult males who were offsprings of Notch and his companion. And we talk about them, a lot of people you'll hear talking about Notch's sons, but the fact is we don't know whether Notch's companion was related to him as not. So we don't know whether Notch and his companion were related because I think I mentioned 50% of cases in the Mara, certainly in the past, would be just two male lions dominating the pride structure. And of those twosomes, that 50%, 45% of those were not related. But you wouldn't know it because if you're a nomadic male, and you don't have a companion when you're forced out of your pride, you need to find somebody. And in that nomadic stage, young males will join up at times unrelated because force for lions, the chance to take over a pride depends on numbers. A single male in the Mara will not manage to take over a pride, or I've certainly never heard of it on his own. They might manage to stay in the pride after they've lost a companion, which is what happened to Notch. So those three nomads from paradise came down, killed Notch's companion, and then he managed to stick with the females, White Eye uh, and the other females, in the Pride, and those three males moved away. And it wasn't until 2007 those same nomads, we believe, came back and chased Notch away, by which time there was a whole load, there was a whole load of subadult cubs, including five males. Now, those five males and Notch in 2007 
and Tamu, and that's a whole nother story, a female who had given birth to cubs when Notch was on his own in the Pride, and who, one of which was actually killed by a nomadic male who took advantage of the fact Notch was on his own, came in, Bilashakalaga, found Tamu with four cubs, killed one of them, injured another one. Two of those cubs survived. So when we moved into 2006, she still had, or she had her cubs, 2007, the two surviving cubs of Tamu's were also two males. So when Notch left the Marsh Pride, ousted by, and the males that did it, the same ones that killed his companion, were Claude, Romeo, and there is Romeo. I mean Romeo, I mean what a beautiful male. And the lionesses seem to love Romeo. He was a Romeo. So Romeo, and Claude, look at that, 14 year old, we called him Claude because his nose and his face was just all clawed up. This was when he was 14, out on his legs and he was killed, he broke into a boma. His teeth were so worn down by that time that he tried to kill a cow, could barely manage it and he was spared often happens with old males like that. They get into trouble with pastoralists, they get killed. So Claude, Romeo and a third male moved in, the same ones that had killed Notch's companion, moved back down from paradise where they established themselves and chased Notch away. And Notch, Tamu, her two sons, and the five young sub-adult males, so now this is end of 2007, they went just trying to keep out of trouble at that point. And those sub-adult males, the five boys, were really at that time probably about two years old, that kind of age. And you hear later people talking about Notch's boys and saying, well, sometimes we saw seven males together. Well, yes, five males, born around the same time to Notch and his companion, who we don't know if he was related to Notch. So we can't really say those were Notch's sons or Notch, or even that they were Notch and his, well, no, let's get this straight. What we can't say is because Notch and his companion weren't necessarily related. It means that the connection amongst those five boys came between the females. So they probably shared either the same mother or mothers and was sired by either Notch or the companion. But the relatedness, we can't be sure about. And so now they move out, they're pushed out. And in 2008, Angie was down on Paradise Pride uh, Plain. And this was 2008, this was during Big Cat Live. And the story of Big Cat Live didn't include Notch and his boys who were down on Paradise. And by that stage, those boys were now three and a half years old. So by the end of, you know, late in 2008, about that kind of age, and they were just awesome. Amazing to see those lions. And, you know, Angie kept calling and saying, why aren't you coming and filming these lions? Well, of course, unfortunately, we only had nighttime capability in Big Cat Live, and we couldn't move that far away from the epicenter, which was Governor's Camp, where we have uh, our little stone cottage. And so Angie was just having the time of her life, getting wonderful pictures. And she remember one time she was photographing out of one window and then she had an open side where her main cameras was and she looked the other way. And when she looked back, one of those boys was looking right through the open door, literally feet from Angie's face. You remember those moments, I can promise you. So back now to reading. So what happened? So now down on Paradise Plain, Notch and five, sometimes people said seven. So those must have been Tamu's two sons. They eventually disappeared. And we ended up, because those other males were slightly older. And so Notch's boys, as we got to know them, and here's a picture of them here. Let's just have a look. So here's four of the boys there, I'm trying to dig out a warthog. You do that, you know, when things are times are tough. You can see they're about three and a half years old. Their manes are not that big. And as I say, there were five of them and they were sired by Notch and his companion. So 
they moved around that area and now they're really growing into their own. And of course, what was interesting was, was the relationship between those five and Notch, because Notch was four years older, five years older than the boys. And those five boys, of course, the same generation, born from mothers and aunts, they were bonded like that, because that's what you do. When you're a sub-adult, it's all about you and your group your cohort. So that's why it's so good when lion cubs are crashed and lots of cubs survive. If there's a number of males together, when they move out on their own, they know every element of each other's behavior. They know who can push who around, but they're bonded because their destiny is together. But now they're hanging out with the old man. And obviously there's a certain degree of tension because they will know that he was the one that would have disciplined them and bullied them around at kills, taken the lion's share. So there's a degree, even though they're bonded, there's a different relationship between those boys and their father or their relative, if he was a relative to some of them, because remember, his companion wasn't necessarily related to him. But there was tension. And of course, sometimes it broke out. But due to the relationship of, you know, nurtured over time between the boys and Notch, I mean, just look at that. That's one of the boys. And sometimes the four of them, five of them, would, they would just get sort of, put it mildly, pissy with the old man. Because as I say, their destiny, it's not usual for an old male lion to end up with his sons, and it's not ideal, you know. So really, the destiny of those five should have been just by themselves, but Notch stayed with them. They were his bread and butter, and they were prepared to tolerate him for a while because he had this huge black mane, and that means something if you're a lion. He was a big brute of a lion, big, strong, powerful. And you would see him as there, going face to face with one of those younger males and standing him down. And when the others then, of course, rising to the challenge to help their young companion came in as well, he'd turn and each of them would say, you know what? No, I don't think we can do this yet. We're not up to this. And so he managed to survive. But over time, he became more marginalized. He benefited from the area which the males were protecting together. So he had group membership and all the benefits that went with it. But he sometimes was by himself. Now, what were they hunting? Initially, 2008, they went into the Mara Triangle. They crossed the Mara River and they were hunting buffalo. But these lions became hippo killers. They didn't need the females. They were on such an agenda. They covered at one time three to four different pride territories. And so they were covering a huge, they were covering a quarter of the reserve, 400 square kilometers. So it was a massive area, 400 square kilometers. You know, they were roaming around, impregnating females from the different prides, scaring the hell out of the resident males, chasing them away, and then they would move on to another pride. And so that meant that often they didn't put the attention and time into nurturing the scenario which would keep their cubs safe. And so they'd move to the next pride, spend time with them, come back, maybe now they find somebody else had moved into the area killed their cubs. They'd have to be pretty careful, I mean, pretty cocky to try and do it with those boys around. They're roaring because even if they're not there, you could hear those roars. That's why it's so economic. Don't have to be where you're sending the message. You could be five kilometers away where you're telling the opposition, stay out. This is our place. You know what? I'm running out of time, but this is a good story. So more coming up soon because Notch and his boys were legends. Notch too. I just rang up one of my chums in the Mara and said, so Notch too. I mean, even a bigger, darker, better, I mean, just a crazy mane. Notch too was still alive at the end of 2019. That means the old man died in 2013. He was about 12, 13 years old, 13 max. Notch is 14 going on 15. I rang, rang up uh, my friend 
And I said, what about Notch? Because I saw somebody had posted that he was still alive, Notch too, still alive, end of 2019. He might just still be alive, in which case, come April, which was when he was born in 2005, he'll be 15. That's older than any male lion that I've ever heard of in the Mara. What a legend. More to come. Happy Easter. Stay safe. See you tomorrow. Oh, next week maybe. Nah, only kidding. Take care. Love from Angie. Bye-bye.